I hope they are good questions. They're deep. Oh, <laughs> deep. Deep thought. <laughs> I save the deep ones for him. I'm also having a hard time deciding if an having another child is right for us. I hear from so many that the age gap would be hard. And then another video I wanted to follow up on is, oh, the chicken butchering. We ate the chicken. Solo. But our budget is still constantly being sunk by random small expenses. Mm -hmm. And all the people said amen. They know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another video. We are coming to you from a new place. It's always a challenge to find a place to film. My name is Sarah, by the way. I'm Solo. Yeah, we're coming to you from Solo's office at church. Yeah. <laughs> we had to find a place to film. Have we filmed here before? Maybe. We did one time. Certain places in yeah. church, maybe not your office. <laughs> so I took a little break from our Tuesday videos for a little bit. They're Ask Sarah videos where I answer your questions that you guys emailed in. And sometimes I just need a little break from YouTube. It can be a lot to be on the screen all the time. Yeah. It's a lot. I've been doing it for five years now. That is just so, hard to so imagine. hard to imagine. <laughs> Because yeah. when you started, it was kind of like, let's do it just for one year. Yeah. And then we'll evaluate yeah. each year. Yeah. Is it six years yeah. now? I think you know, it's five. Yeah. I need to turn off all my other gadgets that are dinging. <laughs> Something's dinging a lot. <laughs> everything is. Oh, gosh. Okay, um, we I, silenced. I, we took a break there and silenced everything. <laughs> my parents are in Spain right now, and they're sending us all these beautiful pictures of Spain. It's actually their anniversary today. So they'll be home by the time you see this, but um, it's fun seeing years, all that. Right? Yeah, they're doing a pastor's conference. <laughs> That's how they vacation. <laughs> yeah, I figured I go to the wrong pastor's conference. <laughs> yeah. I usually go to some. <laughs> a couple days ago, they, it, the conference hadn't quite started. So they were sending us pictures from a beach in Spain, eating pizza and drinking Cokes on the beach. And so I was like, I'm at the wrong path. I'm going to the wrong pastor's conference. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so we were talking about the videos. Yeah, so I took a break from filming. I mean just because sometimes I need a break because it gets to be a lot now I don't look at I don't see mean comments at all I, I haven't seen a really bad comment in probably years because <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about it before but my mom uh, helps me with comments she helps it look and she'll check through them and get rid of them before I look at them I I, I read my own comments um, and then Solo 2 also deletes them. So he sees them but they both know not to send me the horrible ones because if I see too many of them I will quit like <laughs> So yeah. if you're sending me the horrible comments, it is not hurting me at all because I do not see them. <laughs> and I don't even tell her when I see them. No, she they I don't tell me. Mm -hmm. It's like recently, I won't tell you what the comment was, but it's like, well, I've been watching for a long time <laughs> and I've never commented, but today I decided I must. And it was bad? And it was bad. It's like, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to give you the time to have Sarah read your comment. Yeah. When all this time you've been watching and looking for a bad opportunity to comment. Mm -hmm. If you had some good comments there yes. in the past, a few of them. Yeah, and you have, uh, <laughs> but like, never commented once and then yeah, see bad. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, okay. Uh, it, could really, it can really mess with your mind, I think, if you read the bad ones. Of course, I read a lot of them early on. And it's everybody who has a platform will have bad comments. No matter if you're the nicest person on earth, you're doing the best things in the world you're gonna have terrible comments if you have an audience. So it's just the name of the game. Um, but to read them all the time, you start thinking, why am I putting myself out there? It really yeah. messes with your head. <laughs> and, and let's define bad. Bad is not like where there's a constructive right. uh, contribution. Absolutely, that is I different. read those no. all the time. I, with, I read those. Yeah, with bad, we're talking about just absolutely just mean. mean, disgusting. Mean and ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so let's clarify that yes. too. Yeah, because <laughs> You can, someone can just have a very different view yes. on things, and that's fine. Yes. Yeah, that's totally fine. Respectful yeah. yes. uh, disagreement, respectful yeah. uh, opinions. Oh, yeah. So that's totally. It's just when Absolutely. it's degrading, diminishing, yeah. vulgar. You add the list. Yeah. Mean. Are I just mean? Yeah. There is just <laughs> sure. a very little tolerance for that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can laugh at him usually, probably, if I read them now, I just would laugh at him. But also, <laughs> you just start thinking, there's a lot of creeps out there, and it makes you not yeah. want to put stuff out. And so that's why I protect myself from it, mostly because I know the Lord hasn't released me from this YouTube channel. And so I need to protect my heart <laughs> and mine. Yes. <laughs> but, he strikes you out as yeah. general. He's like, I saw a mean one. Let oh, yeah, he'll let them go sometimes. Like, why don't you just delete those people a block? Three strikes. Them? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> I don't once. know. I let him and my mom handle that. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, I do love your comments. I learned so much from them. But the reason I brought it up is because the last Ask Sarah video, I, got, I actually got some 
um, comments that I do read and that really bothered me. And that is when I am misunderstood or I think what happens in those Ask Sarah videos, I think it, it forces me to be more personal or share more of my opinions of things maybe I haven't shared before because people ask very personal questions and so then I have to answer from my own experience in my own life it's hard to qualify every question with like every scenario that could possibly be and so I'm just kind of answering off the cuff I, I rarely even read them before I answer them right I notice that we get some people I I offend unintentionally I don't mind offending people for Jesus okay like for the things that really matter but when I'm really unintentionally uh, offending people I, that's what I don't yeah like. and, and it's impossible to I, I went to a meeting recently and the speaker he had a this he says you know how people have a disclaimer in um, when they are wanting to speak or writing a book or whatever oh, yeah and he said, I just want to give my disclaimer today. And my disclaimer is that I, he said, I'm not politically correct. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he qualified that statement. I said, by, by meaning politically correct, I just want to make sure that I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to say mean things intentionally or anything like that. But what I will not do is to try and overthink and calculate every thought before I say it for the fear of that it might not offend this person, offend that. And it's not, and this is a very considerate individual. But he says it's almost impossible to be authentic. People are looking for authenticity when you're filtering everything to such an extent. And I guess you have to be thoughtful about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people demand so much more. Yeah. Uh, and just realizing that, yeah, you asked a personal question. I see I'm, I'm speaking for you. Yeah. Because well, I was in that video, I think. I think it was your words, actually, that offended people. <laughs> My words always <laughs> offend people. I don't usually know why. He, I, I don't know. He has some... I usually offend people much more easily than him. I uh, used to laugh that when he would go in a counseling appointment, he could slap someone upside the face and they come out smiling like no. they were hugging. I mean, like verbally, <laughs> not physically. <laughs> like he knows how to tell people the truth in love in a more gracious way than and I just do. just offended a bunch of people right <laughs> Yes, now. I did. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, the, I noticed that those comments where people take it very personally... Um, because they, they're they're hearing it with their own situation, of course, that they'll take it personally and feel um, offended about what we said. It always has come in those Ask Sarah videos when it comes to people asking me about having more children. That I've seen the comments that are just like, oh, I can't believe you said that or whatever. Now, there are always a lot of comments like, okay, here's a different perspective. Right. Um, I know you asked Sarah that, but here's my perspective from having one child or having no children or having whatever, which I, I love that. I think that's great. Bring all your perspectives, you know, yeah. for sure. But I always figure like if people are asking me and I have 11 children, they kind of know um, what they're getting into. They're wanting, there are so many opinions of the small family like and it's a not, cultural voice is speaking to having a small family or no children even um there are very few speaking to having a large family or to keep having children or whatever and so um i love that people are asking me those questions but i also have to get over it myself i can be a people pleaser bit <laughs> right and the other thing is too <laughs> the answers are not necessarily saying that this is the only way yes. and the one true way oh, yeah. to the father you know yeah. no <laughs> you know exactly. i am the way the truth and life you know we're not we're not jesus christ yeah right and exactly. so you you just have to remember that everything does not apply yeah. equally to everyone yeah. you know so when you're tackling a question if it doesn't apply to you that's great yeah. we'll love the perspective and the contribution that's awesome yeah or if you have exact opposite thoughts that's awesome share yeah. them yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. mind it doesn't have to be like yeah. this is right and this is wrong I <laughs> yeah but i i just read and i just read a few that was like oh oh i know remember you, someone was saying they were deciding between having just the one they had, which was very difficult, or to have more children. And we talked toward how wonderful it is to have more children in the legacy. And that was where uh, I think you lost a few people because um, you talked about what a great legacy you saw yeah. in a, a large family that you ministered to recently. And the difference in a small family that had a funeral at the same time, <laughs> near, near the same time. But also uh, in the comments, I saw him writing back a couple that, about like, you know, Abraham had one child and what a legacy he had from the Bible. Yeah. 
he is the father of as many stars there are in the sky, right? So yeah. it the um the in and and in. they're also I can think of two women right off the top of my head that never had um have had one child and they're both older past childbearing age and they have had a huge impact Influence. in this world. They've made such a difference in ways I could only dream right. about because they both did made a huge difference in children's lives actually in ways that I have dreamt about. Like it would be a dream to do that, but they've had time that I haven't. And so you yeah. can absolutely leave an amazing right. legacy. So just because we say one thing doesn't mean it's the opposite. Applicable can't for be everybody. True. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. They're not mutually <laughs> exclusive. It's hard to qualify that every time you're answering a uh, comment. So you guys will have to have a lot of grace with me as I continue to be vulnerable in those Ask Sarah videos. And actually, we'll chat a little bit, but then I have a few questions I did save for you that we could. Would I offend people <laughs> with that? Okay, let, let's... Are we just so negative on this video to start with? No! Because 99%... It's good to talk this out. I want to talk it out. 99.9% 99 of those comments are absolutely amazing. Yes, they and are. I have, to, I have, I have learned, to admit so, I've learned much. so much myself. Okay, yeah. listen, the last thing I learned, I meant to tell you, I learned so much. Okay, the last thing I learned is that when we leave the driveway, we should honk the horn because then all the cats and dogs will vacate from under yeah. the vehicle. Yeah, that's um, so smart. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay, I wanted to follow up on a couple videos that we have done recently. Um, one of them is, oh, the motivation, the things I'm doing to get more motivation and energy. Can you tell I have more motivation and energy? It is totally working for me. I heard a quote the other day, this was so good. It said that um, self-discipline has never not blessed my life. That was a double negative, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said. That's kind of true, isn't it? When you think has about never it. never not blessed my life. I love that. Yeah, like I started thinking, has there ever been a time where, because I just needed to get more disciplined in a few things in my life. And you can go back to that video um, if you want to see. But in like five days, I've noticed a huge difference. I haven't been perfect in all the things, but just trying in most all those areas, I have noticed such a huge difference. I was ready to like go to the doctor, but I'm like, I better try these things first. I knew what I needed to do. And I love in the comments there, so many people are like, they know exactly what they need to do if they were to just pull it together so that's awesome and then another video i wanted to follow up on is oh the chicken butchering we ate the chicken solo i have a hard, i i gotta admit i had a very hard time i barely <laughs> ate that chicken he did eat it uh, did i yes you ate it all uh, right you just didn't see it I watched you eat it. It tasted good, but it was it hard. It was good. It was very hard. I think I need to wait longer from the time we booked it to eat it. <laughs> then I, there's a little bit less connection. I think that when we have a bunch, it will just be more of a blur. Like, it'll right, just be our right. chicken. I had to tell myself, for all of human history, up until very, very recently, yeah, that was the reality of life for most people. He had to do a lot of self-talk. But let me tell you, he was at the dinner table, and he was like, it's me. And so vegetarian, vegan, I understand you, man. I, I, I was like I talking love, about it, and he's like, "Can we not talk about?" I, I love, I that? love my meat, but I think he loves meat more than I do. That's why I just right. Think it's that's funny. just weird. Is that for whatever reason? I think it just shows how many uh -huh. years of detachment to the source of our food. Yeah, it's true. You know, what's this it, book? I don't even know, but it's gonna be my fan. I know you're really hot. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is Give me <laughs> The chicken was good though. That was my first time eating like fresh homegrown homegrown chicken. I thought you've eaten it like at your Many, grandparents. Farm. Yeah, that's all I did uh, for the longest time. Mostly, mm -hmm. mostly yeah. I say all, but. So there's a few things we'll do different next time. I think our our biggest one was like three pounds nine ounces or three point nine pounds rather. Since then I've read and Take that's actually pretty big. That's good so, size. Yeah, yeah, that was a good size. And I think we will try to fatten them up a little more next time, and maybe a little less free ranging just that last week or two. Oh, the one thing I was gonna say the meat that we've got the American breast chickens, which are supposed to be like some of the best meat in the world, chicken meat, and. The one thing even the kids said they noticed is, um, without even us pointing it out, is that the white meat tasted like dark meat. It was very good. And we all like dark meat the better. So it was not dry at all. And it was just good. I don't yeah. know. Some of us have a couple it, ideas uh, about it. So yeah. I think as we go, yes. we'll get better in terms of preservation, yeah. how we finish it, how we cook it. But that's true. Everything is through experience. Trial and error. Yes. I'm pulling up a comment that. Um, I said that vegans are welcome to complain about this, but if you're not a vegan, um, you shouldn't get to 
complain if you eat Chick-fil-A. Because <laughs> we're giving these animals a really good life. Okay, so this lady said, um, it's Stranger on the Internet, says her name. I'm vegan, so I guess I do get to put my obligatory I disagree with slaughtering them comment. But that's about it. I just don't like the talk about how they're ready to be processed. As if that doesn't literally mean killing them. Talking around it doesn't make it better, any better. It makes it sound less violent, which it is. Um, but I still like your channel a lot. Just on topic, I have fundamentally different opinions. So I, I really like this comment because actually, I <laughs> kept saying that we're gonna kill the chicken and um, I... he would correct me and be like, don't say that. <laughs> I consulted HR and they said <laughs> That's so true. And they said, Well, you know He's like cleaning the... it up or, yeah. So I was really trying to remember the word processing because I it always comes out of my mouth either kill or butcher. To me, that's what we're doing. And he's like, We don't we're not doing don't say kill the chicken. So he's the one being all PC <laughs> over here. And I was really trying for the YouTube. So. And uh, I would admit what's the name of the person who made that comment? Um, strangers on the internet. Oh, strangers on the internet, internet. or internet. <laughs> yeah, okay, I gotta say that I absolutely agree with you. That is the reality. And when I think back, <laughs> and when I think back in Kenya, my grandparents out in the village, they said slaughter. They said slaughter, and mm -hmm. I said that once, they and did. you're like, mm. and so yeah. But it just it feels it, it makes <laughs> He's you trying to make it sound less violent. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the reality is the reality it for is. what it is, and I, agree I, I will accept that <laughs> that you are absolutely correct. Yes. We don't need yeah yeah. You're absolutely correct. Looked at our brand new little chicks, <laughs> and she goes, "Hey guys, we're gonna kill you when you get big and eat you." She said she that. She did. <laughs> Which is true, I guess. They now have a reality okay, where they're said that. Except one of the kids said that. They they know the reality of their um, where their food comes now, which right. we wanted them to. So. It is true because we're so detached. The night before we slaughtered those chickens <laughs> or butchered those chickens, we literally ate chicken we on had, the grill, yes. mm -hmm. and it was very good. Mm -hmm. And so I just have to think. And then we waited a week after we did it before we ate them again. Yeah, so. Ate chicken again. And I'm like, you know, I've been a city boy for too long. Actually, even country people yeah. that I've talked to, they just buy chicken. Yeah. From. Yeah, I, I actually have heard from so many people who have had chickens for years and years and years and have never butchered chickens. And, um,. It is, well, it's a lot they of were, they've been nervous about it, which I totally understand. I was so nervous that day. I was really, I just wanted to get it over with. It's something we had determined to do and, and it really was not as bad as I thought it would be. But I didn't actually do that first cut on any of them. Micah and Solo were willing, so I let them, <laughs> but. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it'll take me a while for it to be normal still. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have I to say that well they say you should never be comfortable with that day really so it well, should always good. be uncomfortable so yeah it's still uncomfortable hopefully we're comfortable eating them eventually <laughs> hopefully. okay wait that was there was one more vegan comment glenda said this vegan is okay with people eating meat they have raised fish they've caught wild animals they've hunted the point for me is practices that support humane animal treatment factory farming is cruel and most americans have no thought for where their food comes from they buy it in plastic wrapped served up on a styrofoam platter your children, it's true, your children may choose how they eat based on what they're learning now. Congratulations on your happy chicks, chickens and thank you for giving them a full life before they land on the plate. That's Yeah, uh, I thought that was a very good, oh, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, you. no, you're, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for someone who doesn't eat meat, yeah. I think she's an authority on this topic. I know. And, um, and to... Put it into pers perspective. And I, I grimaced because I thought, well, the chicken that I do buy from Sam's Club, it is literally on styrofoam wrapped in plastic. <laughs> and yeah, our chickens had happy lives and we were able to use, utilize so much more of that chicken than when we buy chicken. So Absolutely. I made broth out of the feet and the necks and like it was a the best broth I've ever, ever gotten by far. So we yeah. also saved the organ meat and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of benefits for being able to eat the whole animal or use way more of the animal. It's not, yeah. It doesn't go to waste. So it, it does make sense though why the it's very it's it's very difficult for most people to be able to raise their own meat because it's very ex it's going to end up being very expensive mm -hmm. takes a lot of time and to buy a comparable product yeah. it's nearly impossible for people on a regular on a regular budget yeah. 
to maintain that. So it makes a lot more sense now how the factory-based yeah. mass production is the most affordable way to eat. It right is now. way more expensive yeah. to even raise your own. Yeah. That's one thing. Right. And so it makes sense how our learned. society has changed over time mm -hmm. and that's become yeah. very hard. So we as we are saying this, we so you talk about qualifying. Yeah. It is just the reality of the society that we live in right now. Absolutely. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's and a ours, lot of work on our, time. Ours free range, a lot, like most of their food comes from the ground. Yeah. And still it costs. Right. So. And we have a lot of land. And now we couldn't have done that in the city. Yeah. No, it could yeah. not have. And then yeah, also so. when the winter comes, we'll be feeding them more. I'm yeah. Sure, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Okay. I have a few <clears throat> questions that, that we're going to answer. I hope they're good questions. They're deep. Oh, deep. Deep thought. <laughs> I save the deep ones for him. Yeah. No time to think about it. Okay, let's one see. is not deep. So we'll put a light one in the middle. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. No, let's, All right. let's bring it. Hi, Sarah. I am 34 and my boyfriend and I have one child, a 12-year-old boy. We talked about getting married over the years, but just never have. What value do you see in marriage in a situation like ours? We are in a committed and happy relationship. We have nothing against marriage, but I feel like our life wouldn't be different. I just can't get past the stigma I feel people have about our situation. We're in a good spot in our lives financially, emotionally, etc. We have a good family support as well. I'm also having a hard time deciding if having another child is right for us. I hear from so many that the age gap would be hard. I would love another, but I'm nervous to start over. I feel like I need to decide soon because of my age. Any advice? Thank you. Can I speak to the child one first? Yeah. Go for it. That age gap, I don't know who's telling you that that age gap would be hard. I th they think the hardest part would be your older child is involved in things and you have a baby where um, it's just different. Like you'd be bringing a baby to the games and um, maybe to homecoming breakfast or whatever ha is happening. You got like two different stages. But otherwise, I, I actually think that can be such a blessing. I have been so amazed at watching the relationship of Judah, our 19 year old, with his youngest siblings who are back at home. He calls them even though he can't even be at home. He has a relationship with them. He loves them so much. They love him so much. It is the most beautiful thing. And I've seen a lot of people have huge, huge gaps where they say it is just the most incredible blessing to have a tiny one with an older child because that older child really appreciates it a lot more than a two-year-old let me tell you when a new sibling comes in yeah um especially if your child's like okay i guess there could be a child that's like very resentful of a new baby coming in but oftentimes that's not the case he's actually at the age he's probably past that where he would be feel threatened he wouldn't feel threatened he would just it would be like wow this is a new exciting thing and now i have this little sibling that will you know, when they grow up, they'll be the friends. Part, yeah. uh, it, w it won't be this huge age gap. It won't be 13, 14 years. It'll be like, that's my brother. That's my sister, you know, yeah. whatever. So. I think a lot of it will is basically dependent on how you've raised the older one. The reaction of that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if the whole world stops and ends every moment on whatever that child thinks, it's going to be jarring to bring a new sibling. It sibling. could be unless though they could be just because by virtue of being the only one mm -hmm. that that's just a default mode but that d does not necessarily mean they wouldn't adjust right. positively right yeah you know so and a lot of it is too how we present it as parents i think yes so much yes. of that so. yes i think that plays into it a lot as far as the marriage here uh, uh, is concerned for uh, well you with marriage you have a couple things going on number one you have culture that's a society norm and the second thing is religious. So that depends with what, um, how you view that. For us, if you ask just our view, uh, I would maybe not even say us, I should just say me. What, was it directed to Sarah, all of us? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Anyway, for us, like uh, marriage, we look at it as a covenant based on Christian values. Mm -hmm. It's not about even the civil yeah, uh, the registration, license, the yeah. license and all that that's all good and part of the culture or practice and all that but based on christianity it would be a covenant which yeah. is different from a contract but from a christian standpoint it's not actually the piece of paper it's a covenant which a covenant is a promise from the heart mm -hmm. which 
when you're living together, you probably have made that commitment to each other, but it just solidifies it from just you and I, you and I in it, is bringing God into our relationship as part of our union. So it's honoring God. There is an analogy. I don't know how much familiar you are with biblical stories and stuff. It's compared to our relationship of the whole church collectively and Jesus Christ our Savior. From a civil standpoint, marriage can be also just uh, uh, no agreements, no formal things. You have the common law marriage. So the way you're li leaving uh, um, with your boyfriend, depending on how long is it, most cultures or most recognize it, they look at it as a common law marriage when you're living together. So I guess it comes down to your values. Yeah, and we really believe that the Lord blesses that covenant. He blesses the marriage and the family. Mm -hmm. When you make that covenant, you make that commitment. So yeah. for, for us, that may, that's a huge benefit too. Yeah, I have married people who have had your arrangement for a long time and their lives in the day to day did not really change much but what it did what they stepped out to get married as it was part of their growth in their walk with the lord and their spiritual growth as they got spiritual growth that you know why not we're doing all the things that have to pertain to marriage why not have a covenant before god and promise to one and another commit, yeah, and commit like to one that. another make promises to one another and before god so i've done marriages like that i've done weddings like that many times in the past surprisingly you would think that there wouldn't be any tangible difference but i've just noticed mm -hmm. there's a level of confidence mm -hmm. that i i see from the outside looking in yeah. We uh, have seen mm -hmm. a lot of people um, get hung up on the actual wedding part where, That's true. where they'll mm -hmm. put off the marriage because they don't have the money for the wedding or don't have the means to do the wedding the way they really want to right now or yeah. there's a baby coming and they wouldn't fit in the dress or just all these little things into us. And uh, we believe before God that, that that covenant is more important than a than wedding ceremony. ceremony. Yeah. And so um, he'll often encourage couples hey just do do the mar the do the marriage the wedding um do on the, a small level and you can always throw a party later the party yeah. and the covenant before the lord the yeah are, are two different things can be two different things you yeah. know i've literally done an, a wedding right here in my right office. here in this office yeah <laughs> like a number of times like a yeah. lot of times <laughs> i've done it maybe a few yeah a few times i have yes. that idea you cannot do it because people are pressuring you to do it or you're feeling the culture maybe you can look into more spiritual the spiritual root of marriage right? and that's kind of where i would base or conclude my yes okay thank you pastor like, solo and, uh, yeah and <laughs> thank you pastor solo okay all right carol sent an email this one's a little more lighthearted i started wondering while watching a video lately about something i've never been to africa at all and probably have lots of misconceptions you were talking about being worried about raccoon coyotes and other animals at the new property and i started wondering what kind of animals would you be dealing with if you had bought a piece big piece of land in kenya so Lions not sure if this is a question for you or your husband. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So let me read about Carol. Okay. She is a Sorry, mother. Carol. I just had fun with that. <laughs> She's a mother of seven, an empty nester now with 16 grandchildren, two great grandchildren that I got through marriage. We live in Pleasant Valley, Missouri and have lived in the Kansas City metro area for the last 25 years. So they're neighbors. And she really likes our content because it's so much it reminds her of life, how life was when all seven of her children were at home. She misses it so much. Not a lot of people understand it. I don't understand people that can't wait for their children to be moved out and grown oh carol i'm right there with you i'm like stay stay home stay young <laughs> that makes I me know. almost want to cry that time goes so fast <sighs> it does from it goes what so I fast hear. okay what animals would we be dealing with okay so for one let me just this is backstory not my well a little bit of my experience but not 100 percent. my mom where she grew up in the village where she grew up but when she was a child it was normal to see giraffes and zebras Aww. Aww. and elephants passing by not too far away that was very very common lions i was awesome. teasing and, and and all that you know not tigers and bears but lions <laughs> different thing. You, you had to be on the lions, lookout for some cheetahs. of them <laughs> but uh just watch seeing all that stuff from their house just around in their own property it's hard to imagine. it was not it was not even uh, like with the giraffes eat their chickens no giraffes the giraffes will eat, eat from trees. their trees they're vegetarian yeah <laughs> they'll eat from their trees and stuff you know so i 
That is very So common. instead of keeping deer out of your garden, you're keeping giraffes. <laughs> but I think <laughs> well, it all, it, Now, when you were a kid, though, you did deal with wildlife in your backyard. And you want to tell why? Yes. So <laughs> I grew up... In fact, I showed some pictures of where I grew up from last year. Just real close to, not the... Didn't get to the neighborhood. But we grew up in the on the edge of the city of Nairobi. And uh, where, where we grew up, it was the where the city ends and the Nairobi National Park, which is a game reserve, begins. And the only thing that kept us from the National Reserve was, uh, the, from the game reserve, was about a mile of woods and an electric fence. And so we could literally climb on a high building with a binoculars and be able to see animals on the other side. But we, they will lose power <laughs> from time to time, actually more not often. Not good when you have an electric fence separating you from so the So more often the than not, park. yeah, this happened a lot of times where we <laughs> lost power. So that electric fence will mean nothing to a cheetah or a lion. Okay, so a, there's a lion, a lion gets on the base, what happens? Well, there's uh, an alarm they sound, right? No, there's sometimes, uh, yeah, you'll, they'll tell people, hey, be on the lookout for this. And warhogs was like a real thing. You're uh, what? you're scared if a warhog is running. Timon and Pumba were, uh, <laughs> were practically my neighbors. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> but warhogs are scary in the wild, right? They'll just like. No, but you know, we were used to him. We used to chase him. What? Yeah, we used to chase him. Although uh, there's a friend, there's a guy. So uh, the funniest story one time. It was not funny, funny or not funny. His name was Eugene. <laughs> my brothers will laugh at this because we were, we were kind of, there was a, a warthog hole and we were just playing outside in the field and someone noticed there was a hole and there was a warthog in there. And then Eugene tried to kind of, was trying to kind of mess with the warthog mm -hmm. and he came out and, oh. well, like he hit him. He fell and the well, the water was basically wanting to run, yeah, yeah. but uh, Eugene was in the way, got mm -hmm. knocked down, yeah. flipped, fell. He didn't get hurt or anything, yeah. but we grew up yeah. uh, with that story and laughing. If I even start talking about the story without mentioning the name, <laughs> all the little boys of the neighborhood will, will immediately go to Eugene. Don't remember. Uh, the, more he, the more he says yeah. the word to, the more he says it the Kenyan English way instead of the American English way. We say warthog. You say warthog. warthog. Yeah, warthog. The, you pro, you pronounce the h. Yeah. You enunciate the h. It's a th. Yeah. Warthog. Yeah. The th. Warthog. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway. if you because it was in Kenya, if it was at the Omaha Zoo, I'll say warthog. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just kidding. But that was funny. I, that's my one warthog experience that I would never forget to the day I die. I've got another question. Melanie in Arkansas said, I tried to make a video, but nope, couldn't send it. Melanie, I feel this. Come on, Melanie. No, you can do I, it's this. hard. You see yourself on there and you're like, uh, yeah, that's hard. It's yeah. hard to send it. Okay, I get it. I would like to ask you about budgeting. We're in a better financial position now, which is great, but our budget is still constantly being sunk by random small expenses. Mm -hmm. And all the people said amen, they know. Mm -hmm. My husband running to Home Depot for this and that, picking up snacks somewhere, purchasing something we need that wasn't expected. I manage the day to day of our budget and I think my husband feels like, what's the big deal, it's only $30, but mm -hmm. it all adds up and makes it impossible to budget. He is open to making changes, but I'm not just not sure what it needs to look like and how we can track and budget for small random expenses. I'd love to know more about how you handle your budget day to day, not just paying bills at the beginning of the month. I have met with hundreds, maybe thousands of families over the last 20 years. Most of the time, people don't go off on their budget on bills and stuff. It's usually the small things that are never really accounted for because they don't feel like a lot while you're spending it. Like the quick stop at Starbucks. You hit that a few times every week. Mm -hmm. I just got a coffee the other day at a coffee shop because I left before getting my coffee ready. I had to go early and I got a large one because I needed to stay up because I left really early. I needed the extra shot. I'm like... <laughs> It was like almost $24 eight, later. <laughs> it was like eight bucks a cup of coffee. Oh man. I mean, so you know. Diet Cokes are only $1.50. Yeah. They kill you faster than <laughs> Coke or coffee, but That's we'll true. see. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, it's amazing how th those things, you do that, so, and then the, your spouse does something different, and then one goes to lunch for this, and then the other one, 
you could drop a hundred dollars in one day or even fifty dollars but you add that up over a period of 25 working days or 20 working days the way it adds up and that's where a lot of the problem usually is if you want to correct your budget i'm going to go really i'm going to answer your question really quickly and just get to the end before the in between because there's a lot more in between has to happen make that miscellaneous amount part of your budget mm -hmm. so start with a realistic amount and the realistic amount would be what you spent last month look right? the, no look the last three months because mm -hmm. sometimes you have months that are more or less more or less then you will know exactly how much you spent the last three months mm -hmm. and then you keep both discuss and say okay do we really want us to be spending this much mm -hmm. on these types of things mm -hmm. Okay, be in agreement. Yeah. And then if there are areas, areas that you feel a little bit weak in, it's like, okay, I tend, try just cash for those areas. Take the money out of the bank. If it's yeah. 300 bucks or 200 bucks mm -hmm. or whatever, just try that way just to kind of keep mm -hmm. track on it and just use the good old envelope system. You don't have to do your whole budget like that. You just pick it on that yes. one specific That's area. Okay. After a month, you could discuss and say, how did that yeah. work? How did or that look, feel? Look, we're spending so much at Home Depot. We need to just start budgeting for Home, Home Depot. Depot. And it's going to have to come from somewhere else. Where is it coming from? So, yep. And, yeah, then, and decide the amount, be on the in agreement, yeah. and then review. I mean, you can always change it. It's your money. If you want to spend $1,000 at Home Depot, as long as you're both in agreement about that, mm -hmm. spend $1,000 in that yeah. Home Depot. But most likely when people People put it down like that they tend to want to change themselves yeah Sarah asked about solo oh boy how I'm did, out of here <laughs> how <laughs> did he adjust to the USA oh when boy. he first got here was it a shock to him was it a shock what do you think I don't think it was a shock he was adamant that it wasn't a shock I remember you're like I don't have any culture shock nothing's different was I Nothing. really? yes you were very adamant he was stubborn in his young age. I wasn't stubborn. I'm still <laughs> But stubborn. there were some things that were surprising to him. I think we've said it before. We're drinking out of drinking fountains at the park. I drank out of a drinking fountain at the park, and he's like, what? I mean, jaw to the floor. This. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we can, you can drink out of a drinking fountain in, in a park at yeah. Kenya, in Kenya. It always surprises me. She said how well-adjusted he is here. He's been here for a long time, but I think he, um, he had... A lot of exposure to Americans so he wasn't very surprised about uh, like how we do things a lot because he worked with a lot of Americans even that insurance company he worked for was an American insurance company wasn't it yeah but um, he also is very he came young I think people that come very young this is my opinion they adjust very easily like a lot of university students that, that when they come to the states from wherever at university age and then you meet them in their 40s and they've been here all the t that time you're not going to guess that they were born somewhere else often except maybe their accent I think that is and I think people more, also you had more a cultural adjustment maybe like going back I think sometimes I've not really lived in Kenya but like visiting even I would say I think I feel like he gets um, more frustrated there with how slow things are or something than I would even because I go like oh this is a TIA they say like this is Africa yeah. it's gonna go slow <laughs> yeah and he'll get like frustrated with things I feel like he has more um, adjustment when he goes back home because yeah that's a hard comparison because I, I'm, all, I'm always going back for a very short period of time yes and so I think it's kind of like that she asked yeah. did i have to help teach him a lot of cultural things yes she's still <laughs> she, teaching he would not like that no but i did have to help you with a lot of words remember right I, you still do this is i was preaching the other day i don't remember the context oh it i said saving, saving glory no 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 saving faith i said saving saving faith he said it over and over and it sounded like satan faith and i'm like later okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay you need <laughs> yeah, so that's language, not yeah. culture. Yeah, and right? then he, there's, a, there's another word we were talking about yesterday that you said, and you say it all the time. Liaison. Li, you, you said liaison. 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 Yeah. It's liaison. It's liaison. how we say it. Liaison. It's just different. So I remember, like, at the beginning, he worked in customer service when he first came here. And so I would, he asked me, he asked me to, I mean, I'm not just telling him what to do all the time. He's like, tell me what words I'm getting wrong, because I want these old men to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> So he, had, he learned really bank. quick how to adjust some of his, it, it's more British English, honestly, but the no. Kenyan English to... Yeah, it was British, it's Kenyan, because my brother-in-law, who is British, corrects also 
Oh yeah. Because they have the same uh, they have the same language, but it also is Kenyanized. Yes. British yes. version yeah. of it. But uh, some a lot of it has to do with where the emphasis. I guess we were talking about culture, not language. But the language, a lot of it has to do with the emph what syllables are being emphasized. Biggest, biggest difference is a vow, um, uh, vowels. Yeah. In most Kenyan languages, because Kenya is about three different uh, 40 different languages in Kenya, including Swahili, most all of them have a consistent sound for the vowels. Yeah. It never changes regardless yes. of what letter. It, uh, and we change it all the or time. precedes it, and we change it all like the time. Like liaison, why is it so that way? Yeah, who knows? Exactly. We just do. <laughs> it, well, it's because the yeah. influences, the influences are from many different languages. Yeah. So, so to me, yeah. the biggest cultural difference I notice is Kenyans very Kenya is very relational culture. We are very work driven, task oriented culture, and I don't think he changed, and I don't think he should. So one is people that. oriented, yeah, relationship, and one is task oriented. So people are a lot more relational yes. they take they a lot take more time, time with people. people and for people and so than they do here for sure yes. it's never you will change what you have to do mm -hmm. to accommodate people yeah here i found more people that would not change what they have to do for people nearly as much i agree yeah all right thanks for joining me today we talked for a while is this like the longest video maybe. since the history of mankind? I doubt it, but yeah. maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, thanks for joining us. I'll be back every Tuesday with an Ask Sarah video for a while until I uh, need a break. <laughs> we will talk to you again soon. See you guys. Bye.